check. Okay, what's up? Let me check my audio. Oh, my camera is a little too high. Okay, let's see how everything is sounding. Okay, everything seems good. What's up, uh, Mix the Pick, or Mike's the Pick? My camera is still too high. Okay. I don't know how I managed to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, where are we on this? Let's see what the UI looks like. I kind of forgot where we were. Of course, it's going to take forever to build the first time. Okay, cool. We just got to rearrange this a little bit. Maybe change their sizes. Uh, yeah, so let's do this. Zero point two, and then let's see. Auto second row height is equal to juice a lot of constant and then let's do this multiply each of these by second row height and then we got output dial to get y so that should take care of that get this rearranged a little better so this should be the size eighteen looks pretty good and then 1.3 1 looks fine all right point one eight one point three Okay, so we got our little UI. We need some kind of, let's see, I've got this left margin here. Um, I think I wanted to separate the left part from the right part. So I think I'm gonna do this. Let's do that. 
or actually, wait, 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 wait. No, so input and output are on top of each other. So... So thresh dial needs to come over some. So if I put this right here, then all of this should follow. All right. Yes, exactly what I wanted. Okay. Uh, let's see, what does that look like? That's pretty good. What I'm thinking is this is going to be the input output. We'll also, instead of having a meter, we'll just turn the dial color and shadow red whenever it clips. So there's the input and output. We've got um, the compressor right here. And then I'm thinking about just putting the juice limiter after it. And that will be good. Sure, let's go with that. All right, 0 0.25. Okay, I think we can get rid of all this Flexbox stuff now. Not sure why it was giving us trouble with the, the label. So we're gonna stick with this for now. Okay, so I guess we can start working on the look and feel. Let's see here. Do we have a look and feel folder? Juice plugins. It's a uh, it's an orange Fanta in a glass bottle. Right, look and feel. Cool. Is this thing look and feel? Oh yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty quick. Oh, it's a blaze. I feel like I haven't uh, seen you in a while. Uh, look and feel. I think I'm just gonna copy the look and feel from. the game plugin um i don't know what do you mean broken cuz i can see your oh uh cuz some of the other people are in uh, YouTube. That's why you're not seeing some of the uh, chat. All right, that let's go and add what I just put in there. Now this is something I worked on in the game plugin and it's pretty much the look and feel that I use for my plugins. Not really much has changed. Um, let's go ahead and just apply it and see what it looks like. Uh, so we're gonna go include it. It's gonna be in uh, GUI. And look and feel and it's called dial look and feel, yep. So we will do, let's see, dial look and feel, dial style apparently, custom dial look and feel, 
And then we can just go into the slider method right here. Yep. We could do slider dot set look and feel. We could do custom dial look and feel. And this is going in a for loop, so it should apply to all of the dials. So let's see what happens. I don't remember if the shadow is in there already. Ah, interesting. The colors are a little disgusting. That's okay. We can fix that. And it looks like shadow is not included in the look and feel. And I must have done that for a reason. Uh, let's get the colors to not be so disgusting. Uh, that fill color actually is pretty nice. Let's go and... Oh, we gotta do the look and feels. So in the destructor, um, I actually do it. Uh, I'll just draw it by hand sometimes. Um, I think I, I did do like Figma stuff in the beginning and I think now I'm too lazy to do that. I'll just draw it by hand, um, but that would be a good way to do it. Okay, so look and feel. Let's see, we need the dial outline color, I guess. Oh, you know what? I think, yeah, what we should do is just go to the gain project and just copy the the color calls. Uh, a view meter is kind of uh, hard. Um, oh, wait, let me turn my mic down a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually uh, have the output dial shadow turn red and the main color turn red whenever it clips. Because um, I think making a, view, a VU meter, it would take more than a whole stream just to do it and it doesn't look very nice. Um, kind of need like a graphic designer to help with that. Uh, but I would make one with like just a basic slider and it just wouldn't, I don't, it doesn't look that nice. So. Uh, I'll show you in a second, um, gain, uh, source, GUI, sliders, I'm going to take these, uh, wait, why do I only have one set color call? That's weird. Uh, while we're here, I guess I'm going to take this shadow thing. I wonder why... See what that looks like. This is weird. I know for a fact that the gain dial wasn't this ugly basic thumb color. I wonder why it changed. Seems like it's different.
Hmm. Yeah, there's only one slider method, so if it was anywhere, it'd be in there. There's only one file. It's only got two. Oh, you know what? I wonder... There's that method I had for changing the color... Oh wait, no, 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 come on. Uh... Oh, this is weird. Okay, it doesn't matter. We could just find some colors. Um, I'll actually go into my template project right here. Where is it? Demos. I have some color themes that um, I know already look good, so I'll just take those. Yeah, so let's see. Background color, lighter color, main comp, right here. So what we could do, I'll close this. We'll go to the slider props. Uh, I'll just paste it right here so I don't forget it. And we'll say, I think the thumb is what I need to change, right? The center main color is the thumb. Yes, okay. And then if we go here, I'll just copy this right here. We'll get rid of that and we'll see what that looks like. Man, it's kind of taking a long time to build. Okay, there we go. That's not bad. That looks pretty good. The background isn't amazing. Um, what would that be? The background, I think. So if I make this black. Does that change the actual um, track color? No, it didn't. Okay, so what's the track color? Uh, it must be outline. Rotary slaughter outline, maybe? Oh, I just put it in the wrong thing. But yes, apparently that is correct. So, it'd be a better color. Maybe black dot brighter by 0 0.1. Ooh, that's kind of hard to look at. If we put a juice live constant right here, I don't think it'll work because this is only being called once. I think it works when you put it in like resized or paint. But I guess we could see. Let me just try and see what happens.
Uh, FWT. I don't know. What is that? Yeah, so live constant isn't working. Although, this looks pretty good. Zero point two five. Fast wavelet transform. Oh no, I don't. I don't know much about that at all. That's okay. I think the, the the outline color looked bad. Dial outline color. Okay, background apparently is the outline color. So one more. And we're gonna say background and I think a white would look good. Let's see what that looks like by itself and then we can change it. Yeah, I haven't tried to use wavelets either. Oh, that is disgusting. Yeah. They look like Candyland knobs. probably a smart way I could do this so I can use use live constant I could probably just move it into the paint method and then move it back when I'm done hmm. I wonder if what I actually want is black with a, a lot of transparency How did I, how did I end up doing that? And nobody told me nothing. So the problem is the shadow is so dark that I think we're not really seeing the edge, which is I think why I wanted white. So uh, uh, let's see what 75 looks like. Okay, let's put a juice live constant in here. set slider props and paint and see if that uh oh i'm 
gonna have to do this. Uh, just copy this for loop right here. Put that right here. And see if that works. I'm assuming that juice, li uh, juice live constant calls paint. I haven't tried anything besides juice. I've just been using juice for the past five years. Oh, of course, forgot about that. If you go below zero, it'll hit the assertion. Yeah, I don't know what I actually want right here. Maybe instead what I'll do is dot darker. Dot darker also can't go below zero. Okay. I think I should just pick a different center color. Cause... Yeah, I think I'll go with my dark blue that I usually use. So where could I get that from? Uh, Fox Drive. Let's see here. Did I make a... I don't think I had a sliders file in here. Let's see. What this? Uh, that's the red. That's the orange. Oh, I bet the blue is going to be in the look and feel. Uh, so where is it at? Color button, menu, slider, settings button, toggle button. Where's the dial? Oh, I must just be using mine. GUI. Widgets. It's gonna be... Dial. Set color. Here it is, this is the blue. That I use all the time. Props, um, thumb color right here, and we should be able to get something good with the uh, the outline there. There we go. That almost looks perfect where it is. Hmm. That looks pretty good, right? Okay, cool. So we can, uh, let's make our attachments now. 
so that it feels like a plugin. And then let me remind myself, do we have a globals folder? We don't. Uh, everything's just in strings. Okay. Yeah, we can we can make that better. All right. So let's do this. Let's make a parameter folder. So we'll say uh, where are we at here? Juice plugins, demo, advanced compressor, and we're gonna go in the source. Uh, it's gonna be outside of it. So this will be parameters. Go into here, source, add existing parameters, and then we're gonna make a CPP and header in parameters, and just call it parameters. And what we'll do is we'll define some constants, uh, some global constants so that we don't have to use these strings. We can um, just use some actual variables that we won't get confused. So we can do, I think we need to include the juice header. Actually, we might not have to. Uh, let's see, it's gonna be, you make an extern const um, juice string, and it will say uh, input ID, and it will do another one for name, because each attachment has a ID and a name. Do I need to make the text bigger? Is that good? Ah, yes. We do need the juice header. Okay. Okay, and then now we do this like four more times, right? Uh, thresh ratio attack release output. Ratio attack release output. And then what you do is you define it in or implement it in the CPP without extern. Extern means external. So you're telling it that you're gonna, I don't remember, is it implement or define externally? And then here in the CPP, you can add the actual string. So Perfect. And now we can go wherever we need these. Uh, let's see, we gotta include this file. Uh, let's see, parameters. Now we should be able to access it here. Input, let's wait for it, give it a second. Xcode is taking forever. 
There we go, input ID. And now it's a variable, so when I go to type it, it'll autocomplete and I won't have to remember which string to use, which is great. Should have did this from the beginning, but. Well, I guess we kind of did, we did the audio part really quick, just implemented what I did in the basic compressor project. So I didn't really do that much here on the audio side. right there I was about to type it incorrectly and the uh, variable saved me and then we have to also do this for the parameter changed methods Okay, perfect. We should be good with that. And now we can do our attachments and see if the GUI actually links up to the uh, audio side correctly. So we're gonna have to make some attachments. So let's go ahead. Uh, how many do we need? Six. Okay, so we'll say um, STD uh, unique pointer. It's gonna be um, audio processor value tree state that's gonna be slider attachment and that's gonna be uh input attach and then we just need to make five more of these input thresh ratio Attack, release, and output. And I haven't found a good way to put these into a um, vector and loop through them. So I always just, um, like after my calls to um, slider props, uh, in fact, what I could do is I could just make a method that says, uh, Void attach sliders and we'll go into sliders right here and we'll see uh, attach sliders and all I'll do is take these like a uh, input attach is equal to SCD make unique and it's going to be the same thing again audio processor value tree state and it's a slider attachment so it takes in uh, your tree state so you got to go into the audio processor tree state uh, the id so for this one's input id and then the thing that you're attaching it to so the input dial so we just got to do that for the rest of them. So let's see here. Thresh. 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 Ratio attach. Ratio. 
ratio dial. Tag uh, ID. Tag dial. Release attach. Release ID. Release dial. And then lastly, we got our output. Output dial. Okay, so let's. Uh, Oh, we got to call it somewhere. So we'll go into the constructor, I guess. And after set, yeah, after we set the props, we do set, uh, or what is it called? Attach, attach sliders, and that should be good. Uh, we only need that to happen once, so we'll put it outside the loop. And I go ahead and build this and see if it works in logic. Looks like it scanned it. This is a plugin I'm working on right now, Lo-Fi. It's got a Lo-Fi distortion. It's gonna have a tone control and a reverb. Let's see here. What is this called? Here we go. All right, cool. It looks like everything's attached. Okay. All right, so let's see what we get here. Let's have a crazy ratio. I wonder why it took so long for it to activate. Because to me, well, I guess we could see. Let's see. Hold. On. Let's go to metering and let's do. Uh, let's see which one. The level meter. Uh, let's see what our RMS is. Oh, our RMS is like negative twenty. So to me, it should be starting to activate around negative twenty-five. Okay, yeah, that's what we're getting. Okay. Oh, no audio? Okay, hold on a second. Logic might have... Um, uh, wait, multi-output device should be correct. Um... You can still hear me, right? Um, so multi-output is black hole and my volt. I don't know what this offline device is. What's up, Manuel? Okay, y'all still can't hear that, so. 
What about this? What if I go into Streamlabs and change the audio to black hole? All right. Okay, that looks like it's working. All right, here we go. I'll put the thresh back up. The ratio doesn't make as big of a difference as I would expect it to. Attack and release sound pretty good. And one more thing I want to check. Let's see if the music still works. Yeah, music still works. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so it's all right. Um, if we, I guess we could compare it to Logic's compressor. I guess a VCA would be the closest. So let's do attack 200. Auto gain off that off. Um, let's do a ratio of four ish. Okay. Threshold at zero. Threshold at zero. Okay, let's see what logic sounds like. Oh, thanks for the sub. Okay, so this is logic at negative 25. Okay, that was negative 35. Yeah, Logix has a little bit better um, uh, transient. It's a little cleaner. So negative 45. Yeah, so this one, this one's a little, um, what's the word? I don't know. It's a little splattier. I wonder if we need like a bias. Because it kind of has the same um, character as like whenever you're making a distortion and it needs a bias. Um, I guess we could make a bias knob just to test with. We could also try the the juice bias, which I haven't really used that much. I don't know how if it like makes that big of a difference. Um,
Well, we could put this there in front of the compressor and then put a high pass after it and see if that does anything. In fact, uh, make it go a little quicker. We'll do it with the generic UI so we don't have to uh, code more attachments and stuff. So yeah, let's do a, uh, let's see. So let's do a bias. And then let's also do a high pass. I guess I'll just use the Linkwitz Riley since it's quick and easy. Uh, Linkwitz, so this is gonna complete for me. Okay, so we'll go into prepare and prepare both of these. And we'll say, uh, let's see here. So the bias set type, which is, I guess, inside of it. DSP, like it's Riley filter type. And then uh, we'll say high pass, very nice. And then lastly, we'll set the cutoff which uh, for a DC, I guess would be five. And then we need to make some parameters. I guess we'll go up here. Um, oh, we only need to make one for the bias. We don't need one for the high pass, I don't think. Bias and bias. Okay. Put this here. No X turn. Bias and bias. Okay. And we'll go here. Let's make another one. I guess we'll put it before the compressor stuff so that it'll make sense when we're looking at the generic UI. Yep. And this is supposed to be negative one, two, one. And sure, start at zero. We'll add that to the actual layout. I'm gonna start doing my layout a little different by the way. Kind of modernize it. I'm still doing it a little bit antiquated. Bias and then we'll go into our update parameter and we'll call uh, bias dot set bias which is gonna be this but with the bias ID very good and it's already being called in prepare yes I guess I'll do that and then we'll go into process block we'll put the bias before um, the compressor and then put the DC after it so we'll say high pass filter dot process and I think that's it okay let's see if this was uh, worth it let's see if it changes the sound at all Okay, let's see. So 
So it is getting rid of that sound that I don't want it to have, but the compressor doesn't really sound like it's doing anything now. Oh, you know what? I wonder. Do I need to make another one and have it be the negative value of whatever I'm setting it to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see if this does anything. Let's make another one. Uh, same thing. Post bias is equal to this times negative one. I don't know if this will make a difference. Uh, and then we put it after the compressor. So we'll say post bias module process. Uh, I think that's correct. See if this does anything. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's really doing anything. Well, we're going to get rid of all that. Let's go put our UI back in uh, right here. Let's just make sure it builds before I get too invested on doing something else. Okay, perfect. All right, so everything we removed uh, works correctly. So one thing I wanna do See, what would be a good order to do this in? I think we could add a limiter. That would be pretty cool because you could use it as a compressor or a heavy limiter. And then you could use both the compressor and limiter together and it would give you even more. So the juice limiter has, uh, let's see, I forgot what the actual parameters you can change besides threshold. It's got a uh, threshold and release. Okay. I think threshold might be good enough. 
I mean, we could put them both there. It doesn't make a difference. All right, let's do that. So we're going to need two of these. Do it like that. Cool, get that. create two more parameters and I'll put them right before uh, output I'll release. Perfect. Okay, we gotta put two more of these. Perfect. Okay, so that should be good. We need to actually make a limiter. So, juice DSP limiter uh, float. And this will be limiter module. have anything else uh, that I need to worry about no okay so I just need to go into update parameters and we'll say error dot set thresh which is gonna be just this uh, with thresh and then what oh. Set release. We need to make sure that the initial values are correct. Um, let's see, limiter thresh, I guess, uh, negative 60 to zero and have it start at zero and then, uh, oh, did I just, no, that's correct, okay. And then release should be from, I guess, one to, I don't even know, 1,000. I could actually just give it the release range. Or I could just make another one. 
because it does need to skew. So let's just say um, L release range. And it'll be from one to 1000. And the middle will be 100 actually sounds good. Maybe 250. okay and then we need to actually process the limiter so the limiter will be right after the compressor very good okay we just need to make some dials so let's do this so let's do Limiter release and then limiter thresh. Uh, they need to be added here. Nope. The limiter thresh and then limiter release. course we need labels construct the limiter thresh dial so we'll say uh, this could actually just say thresh because I'm gonna have a, a little border component to uh, separate them anyway so you'll know that it's the limiter That should be good. Uh, we need to go into the slider thing and do our attachments. Limiter thresh, oops. Attach to uh, L thresh ID. limiter thresh dial limiter release that looks correct but we're gonna have to put the slider somewhere
Let's make another margin variable. Um, start at 1.5 and what we'll do is uh, I think it'll make sense to have the delimiter thresh at the top set bounds um, so the X position is gonna be um, I guess this Plus it's width. And then the Y position will be the same. And then dial size. And then we'll say the same thing. So limiter release. And then this X will be the same as the thresh. And uh, we could also just say, oh, it's gonna be this plus its height. And the X position needs to be multiplied by that thing we just made, limiter left margin limiter margin Let's see what that looks like It actually worked out pretty well. Let's say 1.75. And then what's the deal with the, uh, oh, this needs to be input dial. There we go. I need to do something else. Um, ah, yes, second row height, apparently. That looks a little better. Perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna move. I'm gonna scooch this dude over a little bit. So the uh, thresh. Let's see. Ah, main left margin. So this is gonna be something. Okay, 0 0.3, and then we'll move the other one over.
Something like that. 1.43. Okay. And then let's see if the limiter actually works. All right, let's see here. So we'll have to make the track go above zero. So maybe we'll just take the gain. Yeah, it's certainly working. Yeah, liquid hot fire. And uh, yeah, so that works. So um, we're gonna wanna be able to turn that on and off. We don't always want it on. So what else we have to do? So turn that on and off, and then we wanna put little borders around each section. So let's say, uh, Let's take a look at the UI and just see what we're gonna have to do to make it look nice. So we put a little border component from here to here, and then from here to here, and from here to here. I wonder where the button would look good. Let's just put the borders and see what it looks like. So I guess we'll do, we'll follow the same procedure. Uh, so this will be uh, IO group. And we'll have three of these. Compressor group and limiter group. And we're going to make a vector. This will be group component uh, groups. take in a reference to a group call it group cool and then we can go into oh we need to go and make a groups folder and we'll go into here GUI, we will include these groups and then we'll make a CPP file. Um, group props. So I'm going to go into slider and copy the uh, all this. And then uh, set group props. Yep, there it goes. 
I don't really remember all that I need to do for a group to make it look nice, but we'll start with add and make visible. And uh, let's go into the constructor. And we will do it and that should do it I should at least call add and make visible and uh, so now we need to put them somewhere so I guess it would make sense to do it here so let's do IO group dot set bounds the X is gonna be the input dial dot get X The Y is also going to be the input dial to get Y. But the width is going to be the input dial to get width, I guess. And the height is going to be input dial to get. Plus the output dial dot get y plus the output dial dot get height, I think. Let's just build that and see what happens. supposed to do this because of the label so the y position is right here yeah so would it be better so i can move it up So let's do this times use live constant and then do another one for this part. Oh wait, I could just do this. Make it two. Okay. And then once we get those right, I guess we could just put them into variables up here. Point four. So 
So we could do, uh, let's see, auto group height, uh, or actually I guess y is equal to 0 0.1. And then auto group height is equal to 2.4. And we could do this. Oh, group height. And then we could do the same thing for the limiter one, it's probably gonna be different for the compressor one because it's wider. So let's say um, limiter group dot set bounds. And I guess I can copy this. And instead of using input dial, I'll use the thresh dial. It'll make it a little more readable when you come back to it. Let's just make sure that looks correct. Okay, now I just need to do the compressor, which I think is gonna be a little different. Compressor group, dot set bounds. Oops, uh, I gotta get this. So the threshold I think is the first one. So is it the width is the only thing that I need to change? Yeah. So the width probably, let's see, compressor group, can I just be multiplied by two? Or does it have to be uh, fine tuned? No, it looks like it works. Okay, very nice. So lastly, let's go. And we could say, uh, let's see. IO group set text. IO uh, limiter group and we'll probably make a look and feel for this so that we can change the font and stuff. Let's see what it looks like right now. Okay, cool. Great. Okay, we can change some colors. So like what we could do is have the, the IO stuff blue, maybe the threshold stuff yellow and the compressor stuff red. Kind of make it look like it's a console or something. Be kind of cool. We've got our shadows and our gradient. We've got our groups. Yeah, I think it's a good place to stop for today. We'll need to kind of fine tune the sizes a little bit. See if we want to make a look and feel for the groups. Um, 
We need to make the fill color the same as the center color. Uh, and then change the colors. And I think that's pretty much it. We could also... Um, we'll probably have some time next uh, Tuesday where we can um, replace the compressor with some uh, custom compressor code. I'll just take it out of the Hack Audio book by Eric Tarr. Um, it's pretty simple and I think it sounds a little better than the Juice Compressor if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, so okay, that's a good place to stop. So I will be back Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Go join the Discord if you're not in it. Um, it's in the Twitch About page, uh, the Vitor DSP group. Go check it out. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you next time. All right, see you.